In the summer of 2018, Apple, the world's biggest phone maker, had a major attack on one of its manufacturing units in Taiwan. Now, this was a cyber attack. It shut down this particular plant for a full three days. And it was a critical time for Apple because it was preparing for the busy season of Thanksgiving and Christmas. Remember, these are the big seasons for a phone maker. So this particular attack, coming as it does in the month of August, that was terrible timing. Now, that plant was run by a firm called the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. It is the world's largest foundry and the go-to producer for chips or semiconductors that are used in Apple smartphones. By some industry estimates, TSMC, this one company alone, accounts for more than 90% of the semiconductors used in global smartphones. That attack made the US and Europe, for the very first time, sit up and take note of this gigantic vulnerability in the global supply chain. I'm Zaka Jacob, and on this week's Crux Decode, I analyze how the next world war, if there were to be one, will be fought for these semiconductors. Now, throughout the 20th century, the biggest wars were fought for oil, whether it was the Iran-Iraq war or both the Gulf wars, the first one in 1991 and the second one in 2003 were both fueled by the need for oil. Oil was the most sought after commodity in the 20th century. Countries were willing to go to grave lengths to secure a steady supply of oil. But in the 21st century, this precious commodity could be semiconductors or chips. Semiconductors could be the new oil. Now, these semiconductors are circuits which are indispensable to everything that we make and use, from laptops to cars to air conditioners. It's even used in critical military equipment. Every device that you have is run with a series of chips or semiconductor-enabled circuits. The world is committing half a trillion US dollars. Just think about that figure for a second. Half a trillion dollars, it's almost the size of the GDP of Switzerland, that amount is being dedicated for the development of semiconductor capacity. And the criticality of semiconductors was seen last year when the global supply chain was completely disrupted. There was a huge shortage through much of the summer of 2021, lasting for anywhere between 18 to 20 weeks. There was a huge hit to the global supply chain of semiconductors, and that's why the prices of these electronic items, whether it's laptops or smartphones, they went up significantly. So what companies ended up doing was to simply hoard up, simply stock up on semiconductors. Automakers, for example, have put a pause to their production because costs, their input costs, had gone up. Apple had to push back some of its new launches because semiconductors, which are critical to make smartphones, were simply not available. So what comes next? Now, just to give you a background, Taiwan has had an almost iron grip on the manufacturing of semiconductors in the world. More than 60% of the world's chips come from this tiny island. South Korea comes at a distant second with just 15%. And this, strategically, represents a choke point because Taiwan, of course, it's well known, is precariously threatened by China. Which is why countries around the world, from the United States to China to Japan and even India, are increasingly moving to self-reliance in semiconductors. For decades now, the United States has been a leader in the semiconductor industry. It controls more than 50% of the market, roughly about $200 billion of market share in terms of revenues as of 2020. According to IC Insights, Eight of the 15 biggest semiconductor companies in the world are in the United States, Intel, of course, being the biggest of them. China is a net importer of semiconductors. It heavily relies on foreign manufacturers, most of them from the United States, but also a large chunk of Chinese imports come from Taiwan. China imported almost $350 billion worth of chips in 2020. That's the highest by any country in the world. And in this massive trade war that's happening between the United States and China, the US was able to cut off supply of semiconductors 
from TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the world's biggest, as well as other foundries, to Huawei Technologies. Now, you'll remember Huawei is one of the biggest smartphone manufacturers in China. It's also a critical player in the high-end 5G technology. Now, back in 2019, the United States Department of Commerce added Huawei to its entity list, which effectively means that no American company can sell or transfer American technology to Huawei. It also negotiated with TSMC to establish a $12 billion semiconductor fabrication plant in Arizona. South Korea has committed to build a $10 billion facility in Austin, Texas. The United States is already more dependent on Taiwan for its high-end microchips than it was on Middle Eastern oil in the decades past. Which is why the next war could be fought for chips or semiconductors and not for oil. The European Union, which has almost $30 billion of investments of public-private partnership to try and raise Europe's share of global chip making to 20%. Right now, it's under 10%. And of course, how can one not talk about China? China has listed out a new five-year plan which is helping channel more and more funds to its domestic chip industry. It is committing something to the tune of $1.5 trillion all the way through to 2025. Now, it's also launched something called the Made in China 2025 initiative. It's been ramping up its efforts to use financial incentives, intellectual property, antitrust standards to try and accelerate the development of its domestic semiconductor industry. But that's not all. Beijing is also resorting to underhand tactics, stealing chip IPs, cyber attacks, particularly on Taiwan-based manufacturers. In fact, Taiwanese cybersecurity firm Team T5 had recently observed a steady increase in the attacks happening on the Taiwanese chip industry. T5 believes that China could use economic coercion, cyber attacks, hybrid tactics to try and seize or harm Taiwan's semiconductor industry. So what exactly is the danger for Taiwan and its TSMC plants? Now, a bulk of these fabs or the chip fabrication plants as they're known, they are right in the line of fire from China. Now, many of these foundries in Taiwan are located on a very narrow plain along the west coast of Taiwan. And the problem there is the west coast of Taiwan is bang opposite China. It's just about 100 odd kilometers away from the nearest point on the western coast of Taiwan. Now, most of these are on the so-called red beaches. Now, anybody who's been to Taiwan knows, and strategic military analysts have been talking about this, that in the event that China were to decide to attack Taiwan, it's going to use these red beaches as strategic landing sites, and then from there on, go on to attack the island, much like what Normandy was used by the Allied forces back in World War II. TSMC's headquarters and all the surrounding cluster of fabrication plants that it has in a place called Xinchu, that's in northwestern Taiwan, it's barely 12 kilometers from this coast. But while that is the fear, there are also, on the other hand, folks who believe in what is called the Silicon Shield Theory. Now, what is the Silicon Shield Theory? This is something that was propagated by one of Taiwan's former economy ministers, who argued basically that because Taiwan's semiconductor industry is so big, too big to fail, not just for China or Chinese imports, but also for the rest of the world, Chinese manufacturing, for example, is absolutely dependent on Taiwan's semiconductors, that China would dare not attack these companies or these foundries. Because think about it for a second. If China were to launch an attack and attack these companies, what would the reaction, what would the natural reaction of these Taiwanese companies be? They would simply destroy these factories. They would simply destroy the intellectual property around making these chips. And that cannot be in anybody's interest, certainly not in China's, because China happens to be the largest manufacturer of all kinds of electronics, from smartphones to laptops. So China would find it hard pressed to make these electronic equipments without, of course, knowing how to make these semiconductor chips. It's going to take, by some industry estimates, anywhere between five to 10 years for the rest of the world to catch up to Taiwan's ability at making semiconductors.